Whilst rummaging around in my stock cupboard, I came across this piece of fossil bronze bar, which at 20mm diameter is plenty big enough for me to make the big end bearings. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind with the design. As I said in the last video, I made the connecting rods from slightly thinner bar than Don specifies, so 6mm rather than quarter inch or 6.35mm. There is also the change to the cylinder centre line I made to avoid the issue with the cross heads and the coupling rods clashing. So my cylinder centre line is 1mm further out from the frames than Don specifies. To deal with both of those issues, I've amended the design for the big end bearings by increasing their thickness by just under 1mm. This isn't going to fix all the problems and there will be further issues I have to deal with as we go forwards. To make the bearings, the first thing I need to do is to get a couple of rectangular blocks out of this stock. I covered this off in the expansion link die blocks video, part 33A, so I'm skimming over it really quickly here. With the blocks machined to the required external dimensions, the next job is to drill and ream the crank pin holes. And I just love the irony that one of the few times I decide to go straight in with a larger drill, I do it with grabby material. Oh well, luckily I'm not up to reaming size, so I think I'm going to get away with it. As I do a test fit, we can see one of the other consequences of me moving that cylinder centre line out by 1mm which unfortunately means I'm going to need to remake the driving wheel crank pins, but we'll come back to those later. The next job is to bring the bodies into size so that they'll fit into the recess on the connecting rods. I do the long sides first. And for the finish cut on the first side, I reset the DRO both for the Z axis and for the Y axis so that I cut to the same on the other side. And then of course repeat for the short sides. Before I fit the bearings into the rods, I round off the corners with a file. Don calls out that the big ends be sweated into position in the rods, but I'm not really keen on that, so I'm going to stick with the tried and trusted Loctite. It'll be a hell of a lot easier. Looking here from the rear of the engine, we can see the connecting rod in place, albeit without the bearing yet being secured. First off, we can see the issue with the crank pin being too short. This is expected because the con rods are one millimeter further out from the frames than Don's design stipulates. The fix will be relatively simple, requiring two new and slightly longer crank pins. The bigger problem will be fitting those crank pins because I'll need to remove the old ones, which requires heat into the wheels to break the Loctite, which almost certainly means it will break the joint between the wheels and the axles. So not only will I need to fit the new crank pins, but I'll need to refit the wheels and quarter them at the same time. Not difficult, but painful. The other issue that arises here is the gap between the front coupling rod and the big end of the connecting rod. This gap should be down in the small fractions of a millimeter, but currently I've got well over one millimeter which is a combination of that one millimetre change in centre line and half of the reduction in thickness of the big end from Don's design. So round about a total of 1.2 millimetres. This is not a showstopper for me, so it doesn't stop me from carrying on with the build and it won't stop the locomotive from running, but it's pretty damn ugly. An easy fix would have been to make the big end slightly thicker and offset from the centre line something I did contemplate before I made the connecting rods, but hey ho, maybe I'll come back and do that at a later date. So far so good, and by that I mean these were problems that I was, in all fairness, anticipating when I made that design change for the cylinder centre line. What I wasn't anticipating, until Matthew Stewart again gave me a heads up recently, was the issue I'm now going to demonstrate. Here we're looking at the right side of the engine, 
with the right hand connecting rod in place fitted at the big end onto the driving wheel crank pin and at the small end into the cross head. As I rotate the wheels there is a bit of a tight spot here not really a surprise so not a problem. But as I get to this position the connecting rod starts to foul with the bottom slide bar and the motion plate. In this view the frames are up on blocks so the wheels and therefore the rods are all at their lowest point due to the suspension pushing them down but I can confirm I do get the same issue on the top side when the suspension is loaded. So where does all this leave me? Firstly finding these sorts of issues is not unexpected. Don's designs were penned way before CAD and 3D modelling and I don't believe this particular engine ever went through serialization in one of the magazines which often flushed out design issues. So I need to do some thinking on how best to address these issues. For the crank pins I've already identified a fix but I'm going to give it some more thought because if I can avoid having to remake those crank pins that would be superb. The gap between the coupling rods and the connecting rods I can live with for now. For the con rods fouling with the slide bars and combination plate I think I've got a way forward but I do need to think about it some more and draw up the corresponding design and I'll probably get on with that next. I'll finish off this video on a more positive note with a couple of views of the engine as it's coming together. Thanks for watching.